Hey, gorgeous. Welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast with Holly Wharton, which combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset, along with practical business tips to grow your business. This podcast features solo shows with Holly and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now, here's your host, Holly Wharton. Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, Episode 210. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm here with today's special guest, Kelly Covert. Kelly's an inner voice coach with a passion for helping women lay down their lifelong habits of perfectionism and chronic overachieving so they can listen to their inner voice and love themselves fully every single day. I love that. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you, Holly. I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm excited to have you on this show. So why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about your background and your business journey, how you got to where you are today, and how did you get into this whole inner voice thing? Sure. I love that story. Actually, it's a winding road as often (laughs) our careers and lives are, right? But I started out my life as a professional musician, and I have two degrees in flute performance, and I still perform professionally with the symphony here in Syracuse, New York. And so that's something that I've always been very passionate about. And people always say to me, well, how did you get to being an inner voice coach from that? And it's really interesting because I do a lot of teaching flute as well. And what I've realized is that through all of the connections that I make with my students and with my clients, my through line is always about getting to this deeper place of knowing that we're enough right now Mm -hmm. and understanding that comes from inside of us. And it took me a really long time to figure that out, much after I was already an adult, in fact, because I was a perfectionist. I was a chronic high achiever, overachiever, always feeling like I had to go from one thing to the next thing to feel good enough. And I was always searching for that external validation without allowing myself to give it to me, which that's what I really needed. And it was in the transformation from being a woman to a mother that Mm. really taught me that process of fully loving myself and fully accepting myself right where I am. And then the slow journey of understanding that I don't have to do everything to be good enough. I don't have to continuously achieve. I don't have to do, do, do in order to feel that worthiness. And so what I discovered in all of that is that my inner voice has been there all along saying to me, Kelly, you are enough. Kelly, you are worthy. Kelly, this is your next step. And when I really tap into that, that's when I'm at my most powerful. And I believe that that is true of everyone. And so I love being able to teach and inspire and really help other women understand what tools they need to put in place, what practices they need to be practicing on a daily basis in order to live by that inner voice, which will never steer them down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. I love that. So what practices do you use on a daily basis to help you stay connected to that inner voice? Well, I love journaling. That's a huge part of my daily practice. And even if it's just a couple lines, I always have a notebook with me. I'm always tapping into that's a really wonderful way for me to connect with my inner voice. And I have found, especially with having kids, I have two boys that are 11 and 14. I must have quiet time to myself in the morning. (laughs) And that's me sitting on the couch with my coffee and usually my dog is in my lap and I have my journal by my side and I will sometimes do a little meditation or sometimes I'll just close my eyes and breathe in the stillness, but really getting still and getting quiet. So that voice is really present. And I feel that when I start the day like that, it's much easier for me in the mayhem of my day. And especially during the summer, that's what it feels like. It's so much easier for me to go back to that place and connect if I've done that work in the morning. Mm. And have you always been into journaling or at what point did that start? Oh, that's a really good question. I have always loved journaling, but it wasn't until I would say the last probably eight or nine years that my journaling was very intentional as a place for me to listen to my inner voice. Before, I just loved the idea of writing things down. (laughs) And I think that it's interesting because looking back, I think that's always what I was doing. I was always connecting with that deeper place. I think I just didn't realize it. And now it's become very intentional. And I know that that's exactly what I'm doing. 
doing. Mm, excellent. And do you have any other practices that you do every day or is journaling your main practice to connect to your inner voice? Journaling is my main practice. And I think I always really try to set an intention for who I want to be. We get really caught up in all of the things that we have to do, especially as business owners, right? There's like a never ending to-do list. And I really try to think about, okay, how am I showing up today? Who do I want to be today? And setting that intention and focusing on the being instead of the doing has become a very powerful practice for me as well. Mm. And when you tap in and you connect with yourself in the morning, you start the journaling, are you just free writing whatever comes to mind? What is the process like? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I always start with a little bit of clearing space. And what that is for me is just stream of consciousness writing. Mm. And it will often make no sense. It's just all the stuff that's in my head. I have to get all of that out first. And then I usually come to a natural stopping point. And that's when I can start really getting deep down into my heart's wisdom because I don't have all of the hot mess up there. I have to, <laughs> right? I have to get all of that out because if I don't, that's all I'm going to be able to see. So it's really, oftentimes that will be all I do. Honestly, if sometimes I find that if I just clear the space, then it's there. I don't even need to go deeper because my access is open. It's almost like I can picture this door and there's all of these boxes and all of this mess in front of the door. And really all I need to do is clear all of the mess away and open the door. And then I have that direct connection to what my heart is telling me all the time. Mm. And how has journaling and how has that direct connection with your inner voice helped your business? Oh, wow. Well, I feel that almost every decision that I've made surrounding my business, surrounding what I'm going to do next, what I'm going to create, any sort of blogging or social media, almost all of that comes out in my journaling one way or the other. And oftentimes I don't even realize it's not that I sit down with the intention of thinking, okay, I'm going to journal on my next blog post. I think for me, what I do is I really blog, I write my newsletters, I write my social media based on what I'm learning, what I'm going through in that moment, what's coming up for me, because I know that if it's powerful for me, and if it's changing me, and if it's causing me to stop and think that it will do that for other people too. Mm, and that is an excellent segue into the topic of our podcast episode today. <laughs> exactly. So, so the whole reason I wanted to have this conversation with you is because not only myself, but a lot of other people I see are getting increasingly frustrated with all of the noise that's out there online. So we see people doing daily Facebook lives just for the sake of getting out there and the sake of being visible. And I'm not really convinced that creating this type of content is necessarily the most beneficial type of content for our business. Because yeah, it gets you visible, but is it creating those deep connections that we need to make in order to have people connect with us at that level to either sign up to work with us? us or to want to learn more or that kind of thing. So how would you recommend that an entrepreneur could use her authentic voice, her inner voice to create meaningful, deep content that really gets them noticed and gets their stuff shared? Well, I really thought about this before coming on with you today. And I was thinking about in my own use of social media and connecting with people, always my goal is to feel like I'm talking with someone face to face. So I want to connect with them. So even if I can't connect with them by looking them in the eyes, I want to hit them nicely, gently in that place of like, oh, she sees me. She sees me. And how can I do that? I have to be completely transparent about where I am, about what I'm feeling. I have to be willing to be vulnerable. And I have to come at all of that from a place of service, from a place of love, from a place of I see you and I'm here for you. And that's really what I try to do do because I have not always done that. And let's be honest, sometimes I'll put a post up and I'm like, oh, that just doesn't feel like me. And then, you know, I'll take it down or I'll rethink it or I'll leave it up, but I don't feel great about it. And I think it's really about being completely true to my authentic voice and knowing that what I'm saying is something that I would say to you if I were in the same room with you. Mm. So it's kind of, for me, it's really been about taking off that 
that hat of selling and just just say, this is where I am right now. And I bet that someone out there is there too. And so I can talk to them as though they're experiencing that. And that's been really powerful for me. And it's made it so much easier for me too. So a lot of times I would put stuff out there trying to get people to sign up for a discovery call Mm -hmm. or join my Facebook group or whatever. And it always felt like an infomercial, right? (laughs) And I realized like, I don't have to do that. I just will meet people where they are. And if they want it, they will hear that and they will say, yeah, this is what I need right now. And if they don't, then that message wasn't for them anyway. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting what you say about infomercials, because it's kind of like those stories that we've read so many times on Facebook, you know, what the entrepreneur shares about her journey and how she went from being homeless and living in her car to creating six figures in six weeks. And now she's just so grateful and everything fabulous and then that segs into an invitation to her latest launch and it can feel so disingenuous because it's like on one hand the person is being vulnerable being open sharing the story but it seems like it's just an excuse to sell you something that can feel really icky and that's exactly right also why is it always six figures have you noticed that (laughs) because that's the first big milestone everyone wants to sell you then it's seven figures then it's eight (laughs) figures then it's multiple eight figures (laughs) right Right. Yeah. And I think that that icky feeling is a really important feeling because whenever you're putting something out online, on social media, on your Facebook page, on your blog, whatever you're doing in a podcast like we are, I think that paying attention to how something feels in your body when you're putting it out there is a really helpful cue because that's tapping into our inner voice right there. Our inner voice knows when something doesn't jive with who we really are, when it's not aligned with that true purpose and we feel it. And we feel it as in like, er, icky, like, uh. And I think paying attention to when you feel that way when you read other people's stuff too helps remind your body and remind your mind when it feels that in your body, hey, that's what this is. That's what that feeling is. That's me not being me. And so I should really think twice before I put that out there. Hmm. Now, there's a really fine line between that icky feeling of this isn't me, so maybe I shouldn't put it out there. And this is me, but I'm terrified because it's taking me out of my comfort zones. How do you personally learn to distinguish between those two? And how do you teach people to tell the difference? Because it's it's really, really subtle. I agree. And I have to be honest and say, I, I feel like this is something I'm still learning. Yeah. And I it's interesting because with the icky feeling, usually stuff like that is pretty easy to write for me, Hmm. right? It's easy for me to be like, to write you a commercial (laughs) (laughs) because there's the language is all out there, right? I'm just using someone else's language. But when I'm really putting my heart into it, that's, it just feels like a different sort of resistance. And I think getting really clear on the difference there is good. And again, I think a really good way to start to understand that is when you're reading other people's stuff, see how that feels in your body. If it feels icky, pay attention to that. If it feels scary, pay attention to that. Where is that showing up? Where are you feeling that? Are you feeling it in the pit of your stomach? Are you feeling it in your chest? And start to kind of like keep track of icky feels like in my throat. And then scared feels nervous in the pit of my stomach and understand the difference. And I think also it's about practicing. So put it out there and then see what happens. And that's the thing about social media too is I feel like it's very forgiving in many ways because it moves so quickly. Yeah. If you put something out there and it wasn't what you should have put out there or wasn't what your intention was, be gentle with yourself, forgive yourself and say, next time I'm going to pay better attention to that feeling that I have. I'm going to learn from that instead of really beating yourself up about that. Mm. And also pay attention to the reactions, as you said, that you get from people. So if I send out a newsletter and no one writes back to me, I think, okay, okay, well, that was maybe too superficial or not interesting or whatever. But when I really dig deep and I write from the heart and it just all pours out, that's when I get people writing back to me saying, oh my God, me too. I've been experiencing this. And that's when I know that I've written something good because people are actually hitting reply and responding to me. Exactly. And it will resonate with all different kinds of people. I think that's what's amazing. I mean, when I speak from my true voice, people hear me and they say, that's me too. I get that. And I think that's 
that's really where the power is of that connecting with that and of using your inner voice. And I think that it also has this way of inspiring other people to do the same. Mm, Definitely. So one thing that I hear a lot of people saying, and I'm going to be honest, I've been feeling it a little bit lately myself. What do you recommend people do when they say, I just don't have anything to say, I don't know what to say, I've run out of topics, or like what I've been experiencing lately, I have a whole list of topics and none of them feels right. Yeah, that's where the journaling comes in for me. So I walk a fine line too of learning something before I share it. Mm -hmm. So let me go a little bit deeper in that. I feel like whatever I'm sharing in the moment is usually something that's really relevant to what's been going on. For me, it's really been coming up a lot or it's been coming up a lot with my clients that I work with. So I'm seeing it a lot. It's in my life a lot. But I also have to be very careful about sharing before I'm done with the learning process, before everything has processed through and I'm understanding everything. So when I say that I'm sharing things that I'm journaling on, you know, maybe it's something I journaled on a couple of weeks ago. So that doesn't really answer your question, though. But to get into that, I think it's really about sometimes we just need to step back. Sometimes we need to take a little break. And I think also take a break from everything else that we're seeing, too. Mm -hmm. Because I find for me, that's when I start to doubt. That's when a lot of doubts come up for me when I'm paying a lot of attention to what everyone else is doing. I'm like, oh, well, she's already doing that. Or my thing isn't quite the same. Or it doesn't feel good enough. And I start to maybe get into that comparison mode a little bit. So maybe giving yourself a diet of Mm. info is helpful. And then you that gives you a lot more space to really connect in with what's coming up for you right in that moment. And then being brave to say, you know what, if this is what it is, this is what it is for me. And it, maybe it doesn't make sense. And maybe it's crazy. But I feel like my inner voice is kind of crazy sometimes. <laughs> right? She doesn't yeah. always do what I expect her to do. <laughs> exactly. And I love what you said about the information diet. I know I go through phases where I just unsubscribe from everything I'm subscribed to because I just can't I really need to tap into myself at a deep level and I can't take all this stuff getting bombarded from other people or I'll go on Facebook to share my own stuff but I won't read my timeline. It's like I'll put stuff out there but I just can't take it in. Yeah. And I think even with podcasts and books, Mm. I mean, as a podcaster, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but sometimes I just need a break from people being in my ears all of the time and knowing when is the right time for the right kind of information because I don't, I'm not always like that. I feel that if I was always like that, I would be so insulated that I wouldn't be able to connect Mm -hmm. outwardly. But I feel that there's definitely a time and place for that. And I know some people build it into their week. So maybe they have one day a week where they take off and they're, you know, no social media or whatever. I don't really do that. I just, I kind of go in ebbs and flows. So, you know, when I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm feeling blocked, really, that's when I'm like, oh, I need to take a break from everyone else's stuff so my own stuff can flow again. Mm, Exactly. And also I find that keeping my mind busy with non-business stuff helps. So I used to only read non-fiction, so like business and marketing books. And then it got to the point where I was just like too much information. So I started reading fiction again. And I find that reading fiction, something that is totally unrelated to my business, can also help my mind relax and completely change channels from just feeding it more business information. Oh my gosh, yes. I I am a huge reader. Anybody who follows me on Instagram will know, like I adore smutty romance novels. (laughs) Like seriously, I love them. They're cheesy. I know. But I think that that's exactly it. It's just it's like a break from reality. And that's not a bad thing as long as it's not consuming you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I usually have two or three books going at the same time and they're all a little bit. So I'll have like a smutty romance novel and then some really good literature literature style fiction, and then some sort of business or self-help or book on abundance or or whatever it is that I'm digging into at that time. And I kind of rotate between all of those. And same thing with podcasts too. I find that when I'm listening and I drive a lot, my kids in the car and things like that, when I'm listening to podcasts, I'll often put it on storytelling. Mm. And it's interesting because I'll be in the car and I'm driving and I'm hearing these things, but then I 
I get ideas. Yes. And my mind starts blowing and I not even listening to the podcast anymore, but it's almost like I have to get to a sort of a different realm of my brain in order to be able to open that channel again to my voice and to my creativity. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. And I think it's about kind of going back to what you said at the beginning with your journaling. It's about making the time and the space to do these things, whether it's journaling or reading a romance novel or whatever, to let our brains change the channel and allow this stuff to come in. Oh my gosh, for sure. And I think for me and for most people that that I've worked with, most women especially, I think it's not just important, it's critical. Like this is as important as food yes. to me. And and food is really important to me. <laughs> so, and I have to be honest and say, you know, I'm not, it's not like every single day of the year, 365, I'm in my journal. And on those times where I kind of fall out, I will fall out for a couple of days and I realize it because my creativity is blocked. I'm pissed off at my kids. I'm not able to find any sort of peace inside of me. And so that's when I know I I need to get back to that. And I think that sometimes it's good to take time away to be reminded of how important it really is for you. Mm. And so let me ask a question. I'm sure listeners will be wondering, how much time do you actually spend on journaling a day? Well, it really depends on the day. <laughs> on the weekends, I give myself a huge chunk of time. I usually will like loll around in bed and maybe listen to some meditations while I'm still laying in bed. Mm -hmm. And then I will get up, I'll make my coffee, and then I go out on my deck, especially in the summertime. And I will, will sort of read, journal, meditate for two hours. And I kind of go between all of those things. It's not like I'm oming for two hours at a time, mm -hmm. but I'm really giving myself that space. On the weekdays, I like to have 30 minutes, but some days I only get five and that's enough. So I try not to feel like it's an all or nothing proposition. So I'm really, I allow what the day brings for me while also really trying to make an intentional time for that. Mm, excellent. So Kelly, how can our listeners how can they learn more about you? How can they work with you? Tell us a little bit more about how you help women connect to their inner voice. Thank you. Well, you can find um, thing about my coaching services and one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. And I have some group coaching programs on my website at kellycovert.com. And I also am the host of In Her Voice podcast, which Holly will be on coming yes. up in soon, if not already. And you can find information too about that right on my website kellycovert.com. And tell us a little bit more about your podcast. So it's called In Her Voice. So mm -hmm. as I so, know, but our listeners don't know, it's about connecting with that inner voice. So tell us a little bit more about what they can expect from your show. So I have two shows a week. I have an interview show and a solo show. And in the interview shows, I'm connecting with women of all walks of life who are really living by and connecting with their inner voice on a daily basis. And it's really a place where we can sit and listen Listen to the wisdom of women who have walked this journey before us. So it's a lot of story. It's a lot of emotion. It's a lot of understanding practices, just like the questions that you're asking me, what is working for you and what didn't work for you? And I feel like there's so much wisdom in just listening to women speak to use their voice even just being in that same room or, you know, quote unquote room with having them in your ears, I think inspires us to find that voice within us and to use that voice. And so that's what my interview shows are like. And then my solo shows, I just, I will pick a topic that's coming up for me. For example, last week I talked about abundance because that's what my theme of the month is for my own life. And so I just really do a shorter, you know, they're usually 15 or 20 minutes episode of talking about how that's coming up for me and what I'm being inspired by and how we can all take those themes and apply them in our own lives. Mm. So you mentioned this theme of the month for your own life. Tell us a little bit more about that. So I don't do this every month, but it was just really, really coming up for me this month that I need to be focusing in on abundance. And when I say it was coming up for me, it was my inner voice was telling mm. me like everything would lead back to that idea of abundance. And it's for me been really about shifting my mindset to this place of being in abundance in the moment, in the present time, instead of focusing on what 
I don't have, focus on what I do have and on what is coming to me. And so for this month, what I'm doing is I'm just really steeping myself in this idea. So I'm trying to make all of my intake be around that. So I'm reading books about abundance. I'm listening to YouTube shows about abundance. I'm listening to podcasts about abundance. And I'm thinking about I'm just really trying to embody that idea in my life. And it's been really, really fun. I've been loving it. Last month, my theme was manifestation, which is similar to abundance, but a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's interesting to me how they're rolling along. And so it's not anything that I really plan out. It's just whatever happens to be coming up. And I'm really intentional about setting monthly goals for myself each month. And the goals really have more to do, like I said before, with who I'm being, not so much these are the things that I need to do, but this is who I want to be this month. This is where I want my focus to be. This is where I want my heart and my thoughts to be. And I love having that direction in my life. Mm, I love that. So getting back to the journaling, you've got a free five-day journaling program. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's super fun. It's just five days. It will come straight to your email. You can sign up for it right on my website. There's a little banner on the main page. And in each day, I teach you sort of a different element of journaling. And the beautiful thing about journaling is it, it's not the same for everyone. You need to figure out what works for you. And so I give you different ideas. I give different prompts. We go over the process of clearing space and what that feels like. So throughout the five days, you're experiencing different kinds of journaling with the hopes that number one, you recognize how much of a difference it's bringing in your life. So it really helps kickstart your journaling practice. And then also in experiencing different kinds of journaling, you can see what really works. If you need a prompt every day, you can start to see, yeah, that's something that I need. And then you can create a support for yourself around that. Or if you realize that the hardest part about journaling for you is that you need some accountability, you can say, well, I need to set myself up with a coach or in a group program. So I have that accountability. So it's really about figuring out what you need in order to make journaling work for you. Excellent. I love that. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed talking with you about creating deeper connections online by using your authentic voice. So thank you. Thank you, Holly. And thank you for listening. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 210 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you.